ANC National Chairperson Gwede Mandashe says the biggest error made by the African National Congress was to permit passive citizenship among South Africans. Yesterday, Mandashe led the party's 2019 manifesto review at Mdanzane Sisa Dukashe Stadium. This study is an important aspect of the party's preparations for the upcoming elections in 2024. He went on to question where anti-oil and gas NGOs get their funding from. We now speak to political analyst Dr. Zamo Mbandwa on whether indeed South Africans are a passive bunch. Thank you very much for your time this um, morning, Doc. Uh, to yeah. the minister's um, point of South Africans being passive. Is that a correct interpretation of the peoples of this country? Uh, good morning uh, to you and good morning to the viewers at home. Well, I read the statement. I, I certainly agree with the statement, but in a different context, not in the original context where the minister or the chairperson of the ANC actually uh, said uh, his statement. You know, because he's saying that uh, citizens just wait for the government to, for the service delivery. And I've been asking myself, I've been asking myself if then uh, the government should not provide services to the people and people should not expect public service delivery, then what do we mean by democracy? Because democracy says it's government of the people by the people for the people. So the government should provide services to the people. And yet he's saying that um, the, the it, uh, the ANC have created a passive citizenry where that whereby people expect everything from government and they are doing nothing. They just fold their hands and wait for the government to deliver services. Yet the government is there for public service delivery. Well, I agree with him in the context that uh, the, the government or the citizens of the country have been passive uh, in nature because they have not been able to hold the government accountable for the ineffective public service delivery. So in other words, the government, uh, the, the citizens in the country have accepted uh, a lot of wrong things. This is done by the government. Uh, they were not able to challenge uh, the, the government, uh, the way things are being done by the government officials and, and, and the leaders of government. Now I'm saying this because over the past few years, we were only made aware about the role of the public protector during the tenure of the former president. Uh, before that, people were not aware about the public protector, the role of the public protector in ensuring that citizens are protected and also the democracy is being protected. Well, I think uh, the citizens are passive in, in that particular context. And I think it's high time where the citizens take back their power. And, and, and actually ensure that whoever that will be in government in 2024 is being held accountable, regardless of who they are, people they voted for. Mm -hmm. But they need to ensure that they hold the government accountable. And, and, and I agree with him when he says, when he says that uh, we've created, the ANC have created the passive citizenry because people just accept wrong things. It, it, uh, we, we have actually turned the abnormal to, to be normal. For example, uh, local government leaders are actually very involved. Reports have been made available that uh, local government leaders have been involved in employing their friends, in employing their family members, in employing their girlfriends or boyfriends. And the reports are there, and, and it's become very normal. People are actually not challenging that. They just want to be close to their leadership so that they can also be able to access opportunities, employment opportunities or business opportunities. So, and people in many cases and reports have been made available by various uh, agencies such as SIU, whereby people have been awarded uh, contracts unnecessarily or who did not qualify. And it, that is normal in our society nowadays. We, we have made that a normal situation which is supposed to be abnormal. That's Dr. why Banza, I said I agree with yeah. you. Okay. Mm. All right. Um, when you actually take a look at uh, this roadshow of the 2019 election manifesto, which speaks to certain things, including um, creating jobs and decent jobs, investing in the economy for inclusive growth, um, broadening ownership of the economy, sustainable and radical land reform, addressing monopolies and the structure of the economy. Just how well have they fared when it comes to that, or at least just how much 
much work has been done because it's one thing to go to people and tell them that yeah. they are passive yeah. but what has actually been done from the promises or from the ideas that were held and the ideals that were held in 2019 versus 2023 how far have they come I think a little has been done because the fact that uh, the leadership is saying people must not be passive, they must stand up on their own and actually do things for themselves, it actually means that uh, nothing, is go no nothing we are going to do, you must stand on your own. We, we just say whatever that we say, but the, 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 the truth is you must stand on your own, don't expect the services from us. And I think that is an own goal to the uh, ruling political party because they should have gone back to the people and say, no, we acknowledge our mistakes, we've done mistakes here, this is how far we are, we have tried to actually uh, improve the economy of the country and ensure that uh, the economic disparities in the country is being addressed. Uh, not to say that people must stand on their own and, and uplift themselves. When government is there as the policy holder and the custodian of the policy, <laughs> which, which, which also includes the, the economic policy, to say, this is the policy of the ANC, this is the policy of government. So we are here to ensure that uh, the citizens are actually uh, empowered and the citizens also have economic, uh, economic opportunities whereby they can be able to uplift themselves. Not to say that people uh, must, must actually not rely on government, especially for public services. And yet, I think, I think what should have been actually been a point of departure for, for the leadership was to say, this is how far we are, and, and we are here now to account as the political party to the citizens. We have made a promise in 2019 that this is what we want to achieve. This is how far we are, and, uh, and we, have, we have actually came across some stumbling blocks. These are the challenges that we have. But moving forward, uh, give us an opportunity again in 2024. This is the thing that you want to achieve. Not to say that um, uh, people must not be passive, must not rely on government for the public services. The Mineral Resource Minister has also questioned um, where NGOs get their funding from, in particular um, the anti-oil um, and um, anti-green or anti-fossil fuel um, NGOs. Mm -hmm. Does he have a point to question that? Yes, I think, I think NGOs um, should also, as much as they are, they are independent, but they, they have a level of responsibility to account uh, because, you know, in many instances, some organizations actually put more money in the NGOs because of the nature of the NGOs, the way they are organized, so that uh, they cannot be held accountable for their wrongdoings. And I think they do have a responsibility to ensure that the NGOs are not actually exploited. They are not being abused by people who want to clean up their money by ensuring that they are pumping the money and they are also pumping other resources to the NGOs. So the NGOs should be protected at all times, and the government must also intervene if they feel that something is going wrong in the NGOs. I think uh, the, the, the minister was not out of control or out of hand when he actually uh, ra raised those points. Thank you so much, Doc, for your time this morning. Dr. Zamo Mbandla is a political analyst.